Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Hani Saidi. I am a marine scientist at Tenkenberg Research Institute and Natural History Museum in Frankfurt. And I am also the Deep Sea Node Data Manager in OBS Ocean Biodiversity Information System. In this presentation, I will be discussing three major topics of the recent advances in marine biodiversity using digital data. In the first topic, I will explain the status of marine biodiversity and will review some case studies of marine biodiversity using digital data. I will then exemplify some of the challenges of studying marine biodiversity and how those challenges have been or will be addressed in a digital era. Amongst them will be the advances in digitization and importance of natural history collections in biodiversity studies and establishment of open access databases, which will be the topic two and three of this presentation. I would like to start with reviewing the status of marine biodiversity using recent studies which have used the open access data and uncovered the important patterns of marine biodiversity. This graph shows the global latitudinal species richness of marine bivalves from my PhD. Before this study, most of the scientists reported that the global latitudinal marine species richness is unimodal, meaning that the equator has the highest number of species. However, my study showed that this pattern is actually bimodal, meaning that the number of species decreased towards the higher latitudes as well as the equator. This is very likely that the equator is very hot for many species to to live there. And most of the larvae and juvenile of many marine bivalves cannot live in temperature more than 28 degrees. This is another example of bimodal latinal gradients. Um, my colleagues and I have discovered that this pattern is actually bimodal in many other marine species um, on a global data set of marine species. And uh, almost all the data set were significantly bimodal with the deep in the species richness near the equator, as you can see here. And the locations of mid latitudes picked uh, variously between different taxa and was higher in the Northern hemisphere compared to the Southern hemisphere. So our findings uh, support the hypothesis of tropical species evolved in response to temperature variation near the edge of tropics and also available high productivity habitats. We suggest that the equator may be already too hot for many species. Major challenges in studying and understanding marine diversity can be simplified in three groups, including sampling and access to the physical specimens, digitized and open access data, and monitoring and sustainable use. The estimated Earth's biodiversity is 10 million species, which only 10 to 20% are currently known to science, and the rest still lacks a scientific name, a description, and basic knowledge on their biology. And this lack of information actually um, leads to an absence of understanding the biodiversity and predicting the endangered or threatened species. Invasion of long-established ecosystems uh, by specimens is a natural phenomenon. However, human facilitated introductions have greatly increased the rate scale and um, geographic range of the invasions. Uh, if there are no actually data to track these changes, there will be no chance to prevent and stop the biodiversity loss. Um, and this can finally affect human well-being and the health of our planet. One of the main issues in estimating the marine biodiversity is on the event sampling, which can be due to many reasons, for example, location, cost, methods, research interests, or taxonomic efforts, also other issues related to specimens um, collected in the museums, like loan issues, for example. This slide is based on the available distribution uh, records in OBS. And as you can see here, more than 50% of the ocean lacks um, information, meaning that biodiversity discovered in this area are not either documented and digitized, or the data is not shared, or there is no sampling effort in those areas. This exemplifies the necessity of digitization and also uh, formatting the data based on standards and sharing them publicly, and finally, facilitating the biodiversity assessment and monitoring activities towards a sustainable ocean. Regarding the non-biodiversity, collection-based sciences recognize the value of natural history museums um, as a source of biodiversity data in various disciplines of science. Natural history museum species and their distribution data 
from the past can be used to compare with the present data and also future data and understand the species conservation status, prioritize the plan for future studies and also species management. These expeditions and samples collected during the last decades uh, led to discoveries of many new species enriching the natural history collections and scientific collection digitization at research museums made it possible to create a digital platform for identifying a species beyond doubt with the type of specimens of physical species. 21st century offered a world of increasing connection and connectome to biological information that is of direct relevance to biodiversity planning and conservation prioritizing. Um, this is widely acknowledged that the natural history collections play a central role as a source of data for biodiversity and conservation. Increasing a demand from users to able to visit the museums online and for many institutions, a lack of physical space to display all these objects in their possession makes the use of technology and digitization attractive and necessary for natural history museums. Digitized specimens aim to create digital-only workflows that facilitate digitization, curation, and data links, and does return the value back to physical specimens by creating new layers of annotation, empowering a global community, and developing automated approaches to advance biodiversity discoveries and also conservation. After all this digitization of natural history collections, we do need a universal marine data repository to archive the digitized biodiversity information. I would like here to refer to um, Ocean Biodiversity Information System as an example of open access database for assessing marine biodiversity data. Uh, more than 1,500 publications have cited OBIA so far, reporting on the um, impact of climate change and marine species. One example is our, um, our Biogeographic Atlas of the North Pacific, which is designed as a guide, synthesized, and review of current knowledge of the deep sea benthic fauna on the uh, North Pacific areas. And thousands of distribution records were retrieved from OBS in combination with our own sampling distribution data to reassess the biodiversity status in those areas. Um, so as the last slide, over 3 billion People depend on marine and coastal resources for their livelihood. Digitization and free access to information removes the barriers of inequality and allow everyone to address marine concerns based on the best information available. Open access data help us to have concrete assessments, a more efficient ocean conservation, advanced human well-being, and finally, natural resources sustainability. Thank you so much.